Konnichiwa, motherfuckers. It's another episode with the... Ah, fuck that. Fuck that intro all up. It's another episode of The Rant with your boy, Rashad Bell. Ooh, ooh. Uh, first off, I want to give an apology. Uh, there's something going on with the technical aspects. Uh, I've been... How you doing? Uh, I've been recording this stuff in, like, segments, and I've been putting it together in audacity. And uh, it looks like it's like sometimes a segment, like the beginning part is getting cut off. I don't know if it's a fuck up on my end when I'm recording it, if it's a fuck up on Audacity's end when I'm putting it together, or am I fucking it up in Audacity? I'm I'm not exactly certain. I I gotta gotta figure it out. I gotta figure it out. Uh, Because it happened last episode, and I think it happened one other episode too. Well, not too, but as well. So uh, I apologize about that. I, I, I got to jump back on point with that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going uh, to jump back into the to the fledgling thing because uh, I was uh, was listening to that episode today. Uh, that's when I noticed that a piece of it, like the, the last segment, a piece of it broke off. And I was like, what the fuck am I talking about in this shit? Well, it sounds like it's missing some shit. But uh, anyway, it got me back in the mood. Uh, it got me back in the mood to write or whatever. So I've been thinking about ideas on how to how to tweak this book that I'm currently working on. But uh, anyway, with the fledgling joint, when I left off, like uh, fucking uh, uh, yeah, Connor, uh, you know, came down as the bull and shit, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, he backed Stephen Hawking off. So uh, fucking uh, so the three of them. So it's now so it's just the three of them now. So it's Madison, Connor and uh, Stacy, uh, the modus operandi check. Right. And so uh, Connor steals a car real quick and they hop in the whip. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, your girl's like Madison's like, Yo, I want to go home. I, I need to go home. I need to go home. Uh, you know, like after all this drama with uh, uh, Stephen Hawking, so fucking uh, uh, Connor agrees to take him home and shit. And when they get there, uh, this is you know when I was talking about you have to be invited in. Like when they get there, she uh, she tries to go in the house and then she gets the headache and shit. And Connor snatches her out, and he's like, you know, you got to be invited in. Something something along those lines. I'm I'm pulling all this shit from memory. I haven't read the book in a long time. But, you know, so she tries to get in the house and uh, she's trying to keep herself being a vampire secret. So they kind of connive someone in there to invite her into the house and shit. The way I have that invite shit set up, uh, it's not like in the Vampire Diaries where the uh, the owner of the property has to tell you to come in. The way I do it is anybody that's in the house, if they tell you to come in and you can come in. All right. So uh, she gets in there and they're freaking out and blah, blah, blah. And she's uh, breaking everything down. But she hasn't she's not telling them about the vampire shit. She was just like, yeah, I was out rolling with uh, Connor, blah, blah, blah. And so, uh, you know, they, she goes upstairs and she's talking to her brother, right? And uh, that's the, the bloodlust kicks in and she ends up attacking her brother and almost killing him, uh, uh, draining his blood and shit. And Connor comes in at the, at, uh, at the last second and shit. He's like, what in the fuck is going on? And he, you know, he breaks he breaks him up uh and uh you know her brother's about you know brother's on the verge of death and and connor you know he's he's like all right i got this i can fix him you need to you need to go you need to bounce well no i don't think he says it but uh yeah she freaks out madison freaks out and shit about what she did uh and she bounces you see what i'm saying she runs away from the house because and now she's like lamenting uh becoming a vampire because like she in actuality she doesn't like it i mean she likes the power and everything but she's becoming more and more like connor more and more conniving more and more thinking like a vampire instead of thinking like a human and so like as she's uh thinking about all this shit as she's walking she ends up at uh like a playground or you know like a you know, like a playground area like in a park or whatever and she catches the scent of the girl uh, i remember her name her name was dakota uh I, and like in the very beginning uh, i was saying like after madison and uh connor were in the alley and he's teaching her how to hunt and shit before they end up at the 2012 lounge uh, madison goes and takes a stroll out in town and shit and she runs into this girl her name is dakota and she was young i think i want to say dakota had to been about 13 or 14 somewhere around there she was super young well she's young and but madison and she's like dakota's like 13 14 and then madison i want to say is like 16 17 somewhere around that age and i was trying to do a playoff of like how is it because people 
Like in vampire movies, you know, the vampire, he finds a hot chick and shit and blah, 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 everything is cool. No, but nobody really talks about the age difference. Like, yo, yo, you're like 120 years old talking to a 16 year old. What's up with that? So I wanted to try and bring that dynamic more to the forefront, but uh, doing it in a way that people could understand it. So that's why I chose Dakota to be like, like 13 or 14. And then Madison falling in love with her because it kind of it kind of reflects the whole older vampire falling in love with a younger person. It just happens that she doesn't have the mad years as of yet. But uh, at, when she's at this playground, she ends up catching Dakota's scent, right? And so she follows Dakota. She follows the scent, and she ends up outside of Dakota's uh, uh, bedroom, her bedroom window. She's in uh, Madison's in the backyard, and uh, Dakota you know feels that something is going on and shit and she comes to the window and she sees madison there now like when they met uh, i forgot i forgot to tell you all this like when they met initially uh, madison was walking down the street she uh dakota and a couple of her friends they had surfboards and shit maybe they didn't and but you know they were heading down to the beach they were going to a bonfire not a bonfire but they were heading down to the beach and shit and that's where Madison bumped into him and uh, she struck up a conversation with Dakota and Dakota's like totally enraptured with with uh, with Madison or whatever. Uh, like the way my vampires, the way their eyes are, their eyes are kind of like at kind of like flashlights during the night. So they produce like a radiance about them. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot, but enough for you to be like, what the fuck's oh, damn, what the fuck's going on with your eyes? You know what I'm saying? Enough for it to be like that. And, uh, uh, yeah, so fucking Dakota's just falling. She's just enraptured. You know what I'm saying? And Madison sees her and she, 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 the way I do also the way that I do my vampires, you know, like, you know, they can have relationships and blah, 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 but they can fall into like a, a blood love or a vampire love. I can't remember the thing that I use it with a person. And like, that means that they're like in love with that person and they'll always be in love with that person. So that happens to Madison. Like that happened with Connor and Madison, which is why he's like got her back. And, that, and now it's happened to, but like that happened off screen, you know what I mean? And uh, I wanted like during Connor's origin, I was going to break down like, why is he so infatuated with fucking Madison? And I was going to break that down or whatever, because like when he, because of the time travel shenanigans and shit, uh, older Connor and, uh, and uh, a Madison from another dimension ends up in the past to where uh, Connor gets made into a vampire and they get to watch the whole thing and uh when he wakes up after being turned into a vampire he sees madison and that's the first face that he sees and he instantly falls in love with her and then she you know then like the story goes on and the time traveling connor with the time traveling madison they disappear and so like connor is left with the frame of this this beautiful woman and uh, the first person that he sees after he gets transformed into a vampire in World War One, and like he never sees her again until current day, and he runs into Madison and shit. So that's why he's in love with her. But all oh, that shit happened off screen. That's all in my mind. So I was like, I gotta define this blood, this, this blood love thing. So that's what I have heard with uh, Dakota and shit. They they just instantly click and blah blah blah. So like uh. Uh, so, you know, they, they meet, they talk a little bit, uh, Dakota takes him down, takes Madison down to the beach, uh, introduces her to her friends. They chit chat. Madison, uh, takes Dakota and then they walk off along the beach and shit, you know, and they're talking blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's like that love at first sight. And then Madison does the thing when it's time to leave. Madison does the thing where, uh, like my vampires move very quickly, so quickly that it looks like they just teleport from one spot to another. And so Madison just, cause they were like, she was ho holding her, hugging her and shit. And then Madison it was like, it's, all right, it's time to go. She sees Connor. And she, oh, like off in the distance, she sees Connor watching them. She's like, all right, it's time to go. And so Madison just does the vampire run and then disappears. You know what I'm saying? So that's how she left it with Dakota. So Dakota is just like, who is this fucking person that I just met? Why am I uh, instantly attracted to her? And how the fuck did she just disappear? Like fucking magic. You know what I'm saying? So, uh. But anyway, Madison ends up in uh, Dakota's backyard. Dakota comes, opens the window, and Madison's like, invite me in, invite me in, blah, 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 can I come in? And Dakota's like, yeah, yeah, you can come in. And so Madison does the jump from, uh, like, Dakota's window is on the second deck. So, uh, like, Madison does the jump from the background up to the second deck, and, like, one jump, boom, comes into the bedroom. 
And, uh, you know, the, her and Dakota start talking and shit. And Madison just breaks it down. She just tells her exactly what's going on. Yeah, I'm a vampire. Blah, blah, blah. And at first it freaks Dakota out. But eventually she works through it because Dakota's just totally enraptured with her. And Madison is, is absolutely in love with her. And Madison would le- So, like, in Madison's eyes, Connor is no longer an option for her. And, like... Uh, her other her the dude that was supposed to be the main character ethan the one that's a werewolf uh he slowly got faded out and turned into a villain or whatever because i was like all right i can't have i don't want to have two male leads i gotta do I, but i've already introduced this dude he's supposed to be a he's supposed to be a werewolf or he's supposed to be something i hadn't decided yet i had introduced him but i hadn't decided so i was like fuck it blase blah, blah he'll be a werewolf we'll make him a villain double agent some shit like that but like yeah so like for her he's no longer an option everything is about dakota so they're like chit-chatting in the room and then there's a knock on the door downstairs you see what i'm saying and uh in the house it's just dakota and her mom single family house uh you know what i'm saying and you know mom dukes is holding it down raising dakota so uh dakota's mom answers the door and it's to defense uh, initiative agents and they're there to question Dakota because uh, they're they're officially trying to track Madison down and they were able to tell that uh, Dakota and Madison had a conversation and so they want to talk to her about it and her mom is like yeah cool blah 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 but like the shit goes sideways really quick and the defense uh defense agents get a call uh about the uh the Madison business and their uh their their orders is to wet work the place to murder everyone in the place you see what I'm saying uh some someone he already figured out who Madison was and where she was or whatever. And so the the, the order was to murder everybody. Uh, murder like uh, the mom in Dakota. So uh, the, the one of the defense agents, they kill the mom. And then that's when uh, like all this is going down. Dakota and uh, Madison are upstairs at the edge of the stairs listening in. Because you can be at the edge of the stairs, but they wouldn't see you. So she's listening in and shit. When the mom dudes get murked, that's when... Uh, fucking Madison uh, races downstairs and then has a fight with uh, the two defense agents, and she ends up uh, she ends up murdering both of them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, now, in this moment, Dakota's mom is dead. She got a uh, she uh, took a, a bullet to the dome piece, and uh, Dakota's freaking out. She she's straight in spaz form. You know she's uh, she's in shock. She's not moving and shit. She, she's she's talking really slow. She doesn't know what to do. Her mom is dead. She don't know. She doesn't know what's going on, and. Uh, Madison is like, yo, I, I, we have to leave. We have to leave now. And, and you know, and uh, Dakota's like, I can't leave. My mom's dead. I, I gotta call the police. I gotta call the ambulance. What the fuck's going on? What am I gonna do? Mom's dead. Oh. That's how the fucking Dakota is right now. And so, Madison, on, on, a- Madison accidentally on purpose uses like the the jedi mind trick that vampires has because she's seen connor use that before in in the uh vampire and like in the first book and so she does the uh, jedi mind trick on fucking uh dakota to calm her down you know what i'm saying and it instantly works and then she takes it a step further and she tells dakota that uh, the only person that sh- the only person that Dakota will ever love is going to be her. You see what I'm saying? And Dakota's like, yes, the only person that I love will, will always be you. And I have her the way that I wanted to do it. I'm, not, I'm I hopefully it came across this way, but it didn't. I, well, I don't know if it did. I think it did. Uh, but I I had her conflicted during this because that's some shady shit. That's some straight shady vampire type shit. You see what I'm saying? That's some Connor shit. And uh, when uh, she, when she uses a Jedi mind trick to you know to get her to stop crying and to go upstairs and pack luggage, luggage, you know what I'm saying? And it worked. That's when Madison is like. I, 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 I'm responsible for her and I'm res- I love her. I'm responsible for her and I never want her to leave my side and I have the power to make it so she never leaves my side and I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway and I'll just fix it later on and blah. And she makes up excuses, but she does it anyway. And then after she does it, she realizes that, uh, that's something that Connor would do. That's something that Connor would do to a person 
and it's fucked up. And when, why would she even think that that will be okay to like mind wipe a person? So now she's getting even more conflicted because she's she's hating who she is even more because she did that Jedi mind trick to make this girl fall in love with her and she did it so fucking easily you know what I mean yeah she was conflicted but she still did it and she it wasn't she there wasn't a lot of hesitation and she's recognizing that and she's like fuck what the fuck is going on with me I'm I'm turning into Connor and I don't want to be Connor you know what I'm saying and she's not sure if it, because she's a vampire it's making her do fucked up shit or is she just doing fucked up shit because that's the type of person that she is? And now that she's a vampire, she has the power to actually make shit happen, you know, and she doesn't know. And she's she's afraid that is that she's doing fucked up things and she's going to get worse and worse. And it's not because she's a vampire. It's because she is basically a bad person that and she didn't realize it until now. And this vampirism is just giving her a way to act out. And make this shit happen. So she's really, really conflicted. You know what I'm saying? But she still did. But she still did it. She still did it. And you know, and and I, I the reason that I wanted to do that is because later on, because uh, eventually Connor and uh, Madison, they when when it when it fully comes out what Connor did, she's like, "Fuck you! Never talk to me again." You see what I'm saying? But some of the stuff that she did is the same thing that. Uh, she did to Dakota did that 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 love you forever and blah 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 that's that's what Connor has done to her and that's why she's been rolling with him from the get-go you see what I'm saying she thinks that that's highly fucked up when she finds out about it highly shady and blah 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 but she's done it to Dakota you know what I'm saying and I was trying to I was trying to I was trying to show that like like Madison is Madison in the beginning of the book and then Madison is Madison once she becomes a vampire and it's an entirely different person and Connor is what she will become you know what I'm saying and she sees it and she doesn't want to become him and then when it comes out that he did all this fucked up shit she was like fuck you I'm out but that's later that's later on in the book or whatever but anyway so like they're heading back to the house you know what I'm saying? And then Connor shows up, like right before they get to the house. Connor shows up and he's like, well, who the fuck is this shorty? You know what I mean? And uh, she's like, yo, this is Dakota, blah, blah, blah. And Connor's there to murder her. He's like, fuck this bitch. She got to go. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he's, yeah, yeah. The whole reason why Connor pops up this one time is because he is straight up planning to murder Dakota. He's like, fuck this bitch. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Madison st steps in front of her and is like, if you love me, you will not do this. And blah, blah, blah. Madison is very, I mean, even though Connor does fucked up shit, uh, I made it so Madison is very manipulative towards him uh, because she knows that he's in love with her. And she kind of uses that to keep him on her side, you know, because she always gives, even though she always tells him no, she never really tells him to bounce, you know what I mean? And I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, and she, she, the door's always open. It's like, no, but... I, I'm still going to kiss you, you know what I'm saying? It's like one of those things. And so, yeah, but so Connor's there, the murderer. She's like, no, you're not going to do that. And if you really love me, you wouldn't do that and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Connor's like, okay, okay, you know, you're trying to take the high ground. But I'm I, I'm looking at her. You done jet out my, you done, you done use your vampire. You done uh, enthralled this bitch. I can already tell. So you talking all this shit about me. What the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And, uh... So they, they, so they finally, so, you know, that, that shit gets squashed. They end up in the house, you know what I'm saying? And so it's Connor, Madison, and, uh, Connor, Madison, and Dakota. And when they get into the house, that's where her brother is, uh, Ethan, uh, his girlfriend, Abigail, and I want to say that's it. Oh, and, uh, and is his name Nathan? The, the boyfriend, the wolf dude, those three cats are in the house and shit. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? And who, or the, who you know what I'm saying? So so uh, basically they're like, you know, she, she's trying to explain that Dakota is her friend and we need to look out for her. And there's some shit that's going on in the world, you know, that they don't understand. Because she's trying to keep the vamp, she's trying to tell them what's going on, but she's trying to keep the vampire shit a secret. But she's also trying to say that, yo, we're in danger, but she wouldn't tell them why. And when I was at this point, 
I didn't know what to do next. And I was like, what would be the thing that wouldn't happen? And so I decided to do the next scene. And because they have the TV on while all of this is going on. And the president, it's a, it's a message from the president. You know what I'm saying? And so he gets on and he's doing a state of address. And basically he just breaks every fucking thing down and he's like yo i'm here to let you know that there is a thing called post humans and they are uh they are real and they are in this society all over the world and post humans are people who have had their dna somehow modified uh so and he's just like yo so vampires they are real people that have powers they are real they have had their genes modified and we are trying we are currently trying to find out who who it is and what you know like what company or what rogue scientist or geneticist is out there doing experiments on people giving them powers and shit and then he breaks down the whole fucking and he's like and connor such and such we have a warrant out for his arrest blah 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 if you are with him you will be considered a terrorist all of this shit right and i was like so i was like yeah let's just throw all this shit out in the open you fuck this having the vampires a secret fuck having a supernatural secret let's just have the president come on tv and be like boom you know what i'm saying and break the whole shit down so that's exactly what i did so like now the entire world knows about supernatural shit so then that's when uh that's when madison starts to break down everything that happened to her uh and in the vampire manifesto uh, i i guess you guys don't know so i'll just go ahead and break it down real quick like a quick summary and so basically what happened in the vampire manifesto like uh she meets nathan uh I can't remember, like, the, the brother, the brother's name is Nathan, and the boyfriend's name is Ethan, but let's just go with that, I can't remember, I'm, I'm drawing a blank and shit, but, uh, she's like, yeah, so fucking, brother's name is, she was like, yeah, so she met Nathan, uh, the, the, the boyfriend at the beach, they hit it off, they were going to a bonfire, uh, Madison was going to a bonfire later, she invited Nathan to come, you know what I'm saying, when she gets to the bonfire, uh, she's chilling and shit, having a good time, and uh, somebody wants some Twizzlers, Twizzlers are in the, uh, the back of the trunk, uh, or whatever, and so she goes out to the trunk to get some, and then that is when some dude rolls up, and he is there to uh, try and kidnap her or whatever, and then that is when Connor makes his first appearance, uh, and he stops the kidnapping from happening, so... But he does it in a way to make it seem like he's a vampire because he does like the instant disappear, reappear and the way that he uh, beats the dude down and shit. It's like it was like fucking hella supernaturally and shit. And then he disappears. Uh, Madison is freaked the fuck out. She goes back to the crib or whatever. Uh let's see what happens she goes back to the crib uh she has some weird crazy dreams about another chick that looks exactly so like during the vampire manifesto there are a couple of dream sequences that she has and it's all about it's all about her in a white dress fighting vampires and shit and initially you think that's what it is but what it actually is is like she is breaching over to a different to another reality to a different version of herself and they're like connecting in the dream world or whatever you know what i mean and like this version of herself is super badass and blase blah and doesn't give a fuck about vampires and is murdering these niggas left and right and madison is like that's who i can be i this is who i am and that's who i can be and the reason i added that in is because like i, I know i've been talking about this alternate dimension version of madison the alternate dimension version of Madison is going to be that chick in the dream that I that I introduced. I think I introduced her like two or three times in a manifesto because she had two or three dreams or whatever with that with that girl in there. So like the next day, oh this I'm giving you a whole bunch of shit, yo. It is what it is. So like the next day they go to school. Uh, she finds out that Nathan is uh, has been enrolled in her school, which is all good. But he's cutting class because his favorite author is at the bookstore. He's like she's like all right, well let's roll. He has a Harley. Uh, he has a Harley motorcycle. They ride out there. They meet John Connor. John Connor is an author who has been given a temporal tattoo that snatches him out of time and reality, and he can't fucking uh, help it. Uh, initially, what I wanted to do with this John, this John Rogers character, is like whenever he shows up 
in the book, he it's always a different version of him. It's always a, that doesn't know you. You know what I mean? But that version knows that he travels to the past and he knows that he is going to meet people that he has already met in his future self. So he can so like he'll be able to he's like, oh, I don't know you. And you'll be like, yeah, I know you, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, OK, cool. And he'll just roll with it. So like Connor. Uh, so like while Connor is, uh, talking to him or whatever, no, 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 no. So while like Nathan is talking to the author and shit, Madison is wandering around the stores and then that's when Connor shows back up. And this is where Connor took the motherfucking show, this scene right here, because they have like this massive flirty, flirty going on. And when I was writing that shit, I just fell in love with Connor because Connor had that fuck you attitude, you know what I'm saying? And blah, blah, blah. And then from this point on, Nathan pretty much got written out of that fucking book i was like i I, I don't want to fucking roll with this dude i'm rolling with connor you know what i'm saying and like this is what i'm talking about like how an entire book can change from the character moments in between the set pieces because like i have i plot out like the big action scenes and shit like that like all right this this scene needs to happen this needs to happen and this needs to happen i plot those out this is an action scene blah 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 you know i i kind of want this to happen somewhere in the beginning this needs to happen somewhere in the middle this is going to happen a little bit after that but the inter the interconnecting segments i i don't plot out i freestyle all of that shit so this uh this whole john rogers and her going to school or whatever this is the this is a freestyle spot you see what i'm saying so like when she met connor for the first time during that fight you know that was a that's a that's a plotted out scene i'm like that scene has to happen you right and i'm like all right so the next scene that has to happen is they need to meet john rogers they're gonna meet john rogers uh he's an author all right fuck it john rogers is doing an author signing now how we get from meeting connor to the first time and then meeting John Rogers for the first time. I don't plot any of that out. I just sit down and I just start writing. And then whatever happens, happens until they meet him. You know what I mean? And so during during that time, you know, I was like, all right. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing that freestyle part. I'm like, oh, well, let's, let's, let's throw Connor in here. You know what I'm saying? And I started writing him and I'm just like, you know what? I, I like I like this character. I like this character way more than Nathan. I, I kind of don't. Nathan was going to be a werewolf. I was like, I kind of don't want to roll with the werewolf thing because I really haven't done any research on it. Actually, I was just trying to be different. I know about vampires, or at least I know about how I want my vampires. And basically, Nathan got Nathan went from the future boyfriend uh, main lead to. Uh, uh, undercover villain, you see, and that changed the entire dynamic of the story. Now, even though I have those other points plotted out, you know what I mean? That just needs to happen. I can change like the elements inside of it on why it happened. I just need to have those. You see what I'm saying? Like, I just need them to meet John Rogers. How they meet him? Ooh, who knows? It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, Madison needs to open a box of Pandora. How she gets there, how she opens it, it doesn't matter. She just needs to open it. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why I don't like plotting out those in-between parts. I like to freestyle it. I like the characters to create their voice. And then once they have their own voice, then I, then I just roll with it, you know. And their voice will dictate where the story goes. Like a character could be supposedly getting murked. And I'll write a couple of scenes with the minute. And it's just like, no, 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 no. I like this dude. I like this dude. Or I like this girl. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll be writing another character who's supposed to be in a full thing. And I'm just like, you know what? I kind of don't like writing you. Kind of don't like writing you. Uh, I think I'm going to murder you. You know? And then that's how that's how it'll go. So uh, she flirts with Connor a little bit. He flirts with her. They uh, He disappears on her again. And then her and Nathan... Uh, end up meeting john rogers at a restaurant after after the thing and john uh uh uh, immediately breaks down what's going on with alternate dimensions and all this type of crazy shit uh the reason that he does that is because like i said john rogers has a temporal tattoo i i don't know i haven't made the name the the name of it yet so the temporal tattoo is probably not what i'm gonna call it but he has a tattoo that's invisible that uh that uh makes him travel uh to makes him travel in time and he can't control it or whatever and when they're talking she can see the tattoo on him 
and it's supposed to be invisible. Only he can see it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like uh, uh, Nathan, he can't see it. But John is like, oh, shit, you can see it. That means that there's something going on with you. You have a destiny. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you can see my tattoo, that means that you are somehow intertwined with the role that the tattoo plays. And uh, basically... John breaks, he starts breaking down alternate dimensions and he's breaking down an event that's currently happening right now. Uh, and it's called the, uh, the forgotten future event. And that's what John is trying to stop. And, uh, since she can see the tattoo, that means somehow she's tied into the forgotten future event. And, uh, uh, basically what the forgotten future event is, is that, time traveler like when a person time travels from the past i mean from the future into the past uh their past is the future so they can remember what happened but the forgotten future event is somehow changing the future so that when so that time travelers all of a sudden can't remember tomorrow they can't uh and so like the tagline is does anyone remember tomorrow so none of the time so like none of the time travelers can remember the future so that means that the future is changing and is not supposed to be happening and that is the forgotten future event and uh they are somehow tied into it in actuality madison is going to cause the forgotten future event because her goal eventually will be to kill all of the gods and that is what's going to cause the uh the the this fucking horrible thing to happen uh so he just starts breaking down alternate dimensions and all that type of crazy shit they're like oh shit this nigga's crazy uh so they uh they uh you know they head back to the crib whatever blah 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 and then later that night connor shows up uh, right. And so, you know, Connor's like, yo, that dude that attacked you, I, I have information. He he he's not from here. Uh, he is from because uh, they're currently they're in Palm Coast, Florida. Right. And uh, hold on. What time is it? Sorry, I got to check what time it is. OK, uh, so they're from they're from uh, they're in Palm Coast, Florida. And, and Connor is like, this dude is from Oakland. Uh, I am going to Oakland to figure out why the fuck he tried to uh, kidnap you. Do you want to come? And she's like, yeah, I want to come. You know what I'm saying? And so he takes her on his uh, private plane and shit and they're flying to Oakland and he just starts breaking down what it is to be a vampire and all this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So when they get to Oakland, there's a townhouse that they, that they need to go to because that's where this dude lives at. Connor's figured out all of this information and she's like, like, uh, like, like I said, like he has a private plane and all and like apparently Connor's super rich. And I was like, I got to I got to explain this because I, I don't like the idea of, of him just being uh, like, hello. Why is this motherfucker walking with a dog in the parking lot, son? <sighs> Fucking anyway, yo, I, Connor is super rich and I needed to figure out why how and i didn't want it to be because oh he stacked his cheddar up i was like no 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 connor's not a stack the cheddar up type dude connor is to, connor is a run up on a motherfucker who stacked the cheddar up so uh basically when she asks him like when they're on the flight heading to oakland she uh is trying to figure out you know she's asking him like where the fuck do you get all your money from you know how how you how do you afford this plane you know how do, how do you have all these blah 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 and then that's when he breaks down he's like yo i i do the uh the, the vampire enthrall the jedi mind trick he's like i do that to lotto winners so when like someone wins like the mega lotto for like 64 million dollars i go and i jedi mind trick them and have them give me 10 he was like I Jedi mind trick them and I have them transfer all of their money over to me. Right. And he was like, and, and she was like, well, how do, how do you get away with that? Because eventually pe people are going to be like, where the fuck is this money? If you, he's like, I do this to multiple people. I do this to multiple people and I've been doing it for years. And so, uh, she was like, how do you not get caught? And he was like, the way that he does it, he has them give him all of their money. So if like, if they win the Powerball for 50 million, he has them give him the 50 million, but then he sets up like an allotment, like, like once they give him the money, he then goes and he takes that money and he buys them a house. He buys them a nice car. And then he sets them up with like a, 
nine or ten thousand dollar allotment a month that gets debited into their account you see what i mean and so the and he's like so he's like so their house is paid he's like so they have a house they have a really nice house a mansion that's paid off he's like i give i buy them a car that's paid off and then i give them the allotment for 10 million a month not 10 million a month he's like i give them allotment for like eight thousand dollars a month and he's like that's enough for them to pretty much do whatever they want during that month and it gives the illusion that they still have money to other people because they're not destitute they still have the big house they still have the, the fucking bentley you know what i'm saying they still have mad cheddar but they're not giving they're not if somebody asks for money they're just not getting it no i'm not giving you any money you know what i'm saying and he's like yeah these people he's like yo if i give you nine thousand dollars a month you can live off of that you can live off of that quite quite well you know what i'm saying Meanwhile, out of that 60 million, how much is that going to cost? Eventually, I'm just going to murder you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So he's like, this is how he gets his money. So like when they get to Oakland, uh, they end up at a fucking townhouse. And so Connor, she's like, all right, what's the plan? And Connor's like, all right, the plan is to go in, murder everyone. He's like, <laughs> I love fucking Connor. She's like, what's the plan? He's like, all right, the plan is go in, murder everyone, keep one dude alive, torture him until he gives me answers. And she's like, no, we can't do that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yo, you can't be murdering people if I'm going to, if I'm hanging around you, you can't be murdering people. That's, that's not cool. I don't want to be a party of that. He's like, all right, well, how do you, how do you want to handle it? And she's like, all right, I'll do it. Let's, let's just have a fucking conversation. Right. And so she goes up to the door, knocks on the door and, uh, Basically, uh, she's like, they, they they don't even answer the door to people in the house. They're like, fuck you. Go eat a dick, yo. You know what I'm saying? Connor's looking at him like, all right, so what you want to do now? <laughs> right? And she's like, uh, she tries to bust. I think she tries to bust the door open, but she can't get it open. And he's like, you know, he's like, all right, so what you want to do? You know, I'm following your plan. This is all you. And then, and then finally, she's like, all right, fuck it. You know, let's do it your way. And he's like, all right, cool. Uh... I'm going to, um, he's like, all right, cool. Walk inside and then, uh, invite me in. She's like, how the fuck am I going to get in? And he's just like, Bow! and he kicks the fucking door and the door bursts open and, you know, the door frame and the door just bursts and the fucking shreds and shit. And he's like, walk in the house and invite me in. Cause she walks in the house. She's like, come in. He comes through. Uh, I think there are like three dudes that are in there. Right. He murders, he murders two of them and he's torturing one. He like, he murders two of them right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? He's not a toner. He's not about that bullshit. So he murders two. So he has uh, the other one. He's got him tied up and he shoots him in the leg and he's like, yo, why is, why are you trying to track her down? And the dude's like, uh, yo, you know, it's not, yo, this isn't, it isn't like we picked her out on purpose. This was just a job. Uh, she's wanted by a dude called the translucent man right and uh so connor's like well, who why, who the fuck is a translucent man why do they call him a translucent man and the dude's like i don't know maybe because his skin is see-through i don't fucking know and connor's like oh you got jokes <laughs> so connor shoots him in the other leg right and uh the dude start laughing and shit right i know right yeah so the dude starts laughing and there are dogs barking in the background and the dog barking is getting closer and the guy just starts laughing and laughing and uh that's when uh connor's like well what the fuck are you laughing about and he's like oh you don't hear that noise that's my pack that's my wolf pack and they're coming here to fuck you up you see what i'm saying and then when that happens a bunch of fucking werewolves come busting through the motherfucking house and shit and then that's like when connor goes into full fuck you mode and he just starts murking cats right and uh one of the werewolves ah what did they do i want to say that they grab madison and then jam their their hand through her back and it came out of her stomach and shit and uh and while they're doing that, they're talking to Connor, and Connor's just like, "I got to fuck." I'm, he's like, "Yo, I am going to kill everybody," because they're like, "You need to back off," because she hasn't died yet, and so she has like, man, she, like, she's about to be dead in like five minutes, and they're like, "You need to go," or she's dead. And Connor's like, "I'm not going anywhere," and if she dies, I'm killing everybody, and if you let her go, I'm killing everybody, and if you don't let her go, I'm killing everybody. He's like, everybody is dying today, and then, so that's when she blacks out right now this is the, uh i don't like when i was saying before uh 
the way that I was writing the book up until this point, man, maybe just a little bit, up until the uh, the airplane ride, because that's when I started to let it go. And then this point is at this point is when I was like, you know what, I'm going for Rashad. So like everything up until this point is very, uh, it's very nice. You know, Madison's a very nice girl. There's no drama. There's no cussing really. There's no, you know, there's no there's no fuckery whatsoever. It's it's a very cool it's a very cool story. You can give it to your kids and shit. Once she becomes a, but I wasn't feeling that type of writing because I'm not a PG dude. You know what I mean? I wanted to write, I wanted this to be a rated R book, but I wanted it to have mass appeal, but I wasn't having fun writing it. And I was, I, I was on the verge of quitting and just giving up. You know, I was like, fuck this. I don't, I don't like doing it. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just go forward shot. Let's, let's, let's go forward shot. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, we'll do it when she becomes a vampire. And so from this point on, that's when the book gets like up until now, the book is PG. Once she becomes a vampire, that shit turns PG-13. No, that shit turns hardcore rated R, as you see in Fledgling with people getting murdered in alleyways. You know, the mom dukes, shorty mom gets shot in the dome. You know what I'm saying? People are cussing and stuff. But anyway, so like she blacks out. So like the like the werewolf, you know, has you know he has his arm around her neck and shit, and he has one arm through her body, through her back, and it's coming out her stomach. She blacks out. Uh, when she wakes up again, she is uh, on a train on a subway, uh, right? And like this scene in and of itself, I came up with this scene when I was back in uh, Oakland because I used to uh, to ride the BART or whatever. Uh, they did a movie with uh, Michael B. Jordan about that dude who got shot in the back by the cop or whatever. Fruit Valley, Fruit Valley Station. Uh, I used to go. I used to. That's where I used to go to catch the the, the, the Barton shit, Fruit Valley Station every day. So when I found out, heard that that dude got shot, I was like, "Fuck, that could have been me." You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that could have been me. But uh, anyway, like uh, originally, I had created. I was trying to do a vampire movie, and. Uh, Cause like, uh, I had I was trying to do a vampire movie originally, and you know that fell through. But I had this I had created this scene, and I really liked it. And the scene was about you know like a person just waking up one day. Like the book started off with a person waking up on the fucking on the highway, not on the freeway, in the BART. And they've already been turned into a vampire, but they don't know it. And it's like, what does that person, how does that person handle it? You know what I'm saying? So that's what, I really liked that scene when I did the movie. I never finished that, that script or whatever. I have a habit of starting shit and not finishing. Uh, but anyway, so I, I, wanted to, I brought that scene in. So Madison wakes up on the, uh, the train, the BART, and she's completely healed. And she is a vampire. She doesn't remember being turned. Only the last thing that she remembered is that dude sticking his hand through her body. Connor's not there. You know what I'm saying? So uh, she, she doesn't know that she's a vampire yet, uh, I want to say. So, like, she wakes up. She, you know, her body is, is going through changes and shit. She doesn't understand. She gets off of the fucking, uh, the bar or whatever. She stumbles down the steps. And then when she goes to grab the, the, the railing, she grabs it and she bends the railing with her hand. She's like, what in the fuck is going on? Uh, a security guard is coming up. Uh, I don't, I can't remember if he was just, if it was just, uh, by accident, he was just rolling through or because of commotion. I want to say she was just rolling through, but a security guard comes up and he sees her. And she's covered in blood. You see what I'm saying? And the security guard's like, what in the fuck? You know, he pulls his gun out. He's like, stop, freeze. You know, what the fuck is going on? Why are you covered in blood? You know what I'm saying? Because it looks like she just murdered someone. Uh, because like I said, her wound healed. But so she doesn't have any cuts or any scrapes on her, but she's covered in blood, which means it's not her blood. So he's, so the security guard is thinking that, oh shit, she done murdered some fucking body. I done caught a murderer. So, uh. Uh, Madison goes in a full vampire mode, full blackout mode. The the way that I the way that I'm doing my vampires is like they have to feed. If you don't feed, eventually your body will go on auto, and it will just kill the closest person to you. You see what I'm saying? That is the drawback of being a vampire. It's like yo, you have to feed because if you don't, you will lose control of your body and you will start murdering people. And then when you come to, because now you have blood, you're like, holy shit, I just murked the whole family. So like her vampire nature is kicking in. And this is the thing that she's fighting against the entire novel because she doesn't want the vampire nature to take over. But in this instance, it does. 
And she ends up uh, murking the security guard and drinking his blood and all type of crazy shit. Uh, she, uh, she freaks out. What the fuck happens next, yo? She freaks out. She leaves. Uh, she jacks a dude for his clothes or whatever. And uh, she goes to an apartment. I can't remember. She, she, she breaks into someone's apartment or whatever, and they're not there. And so she, uh, she's like, she's just really tired. She's tired. She doesn't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So she goes to sleep in the bed. Like, the dude's not there. or Whoever lives, owns the house, the apartment's not there. She goes to sleep in the bed. It's not like they can do anything. She's a vampire, right? She doesn't really know that she's a vampire yet. She just knows something is weird. Something is going on. Something's happening to her. And she's kind of putting it together. And, you know, like, while she sleeps, the, uh... The, you know, the sun comes up, the curtains aren't drawn closed, she catches on fire, which in turn catches the apartment on fire, which in turn catches the entire apartment complex on fire, and then the entire apartment complex burns the fuck down, and she's trapped in the rubble. Uh... When uh, she uh, eventually, it takes her like a day or two to pull her. No, 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 no. It doesn't take a day or two. Uh, but it takes a hot second for her to get out. But she eventually pulls herself out of the rubble. And, uh, she, you know, she's walking around the street days. And then that's when Connor rolls up on her. Right. He's like, what the fuck have you been? I've been looking for you. She's like, how did you find me? I think he found her because the apartment complex burnt down. He was just like, yeah, mad sirens and shit or whatever. Because like. Uh, like, uh, I, I want to say she was there for a couple of days because they already, like, the firefighters already put the fire out and everything like that, and there weren't any survivors, and then eventually she just pulls herself out of, like, massive amounts of rubble and shit. But, uh, but anyway, Connor finds her, uh, they hop in the whip and they're driving out, you know, he done jacked the fucking crib or whatever. They're chilling in there, and then... That is when, oof, that is when the Marauders show up. Uh, now, the Marauders are, in the book, you don't know. I haven't really introduced, yeah, I did. Now, the, the Marauders, I was wondering if I introduced who the Marauders work for. Uh, the Marauders work for the Translucent Man. And since, uh, since the initial kidnapping didn't happen, you know what I'm saying? He sent in he sent in a, a new team to come get him. And and these dudes are like primed and ready to take down supernatural beings. They have bullets specifically equipped to like stop regeneration when they shoot you or whatever. So they uh they they bust up through the house and shit. And uh, she tries to put up a fight and she gets caught in a dome. Blah, right? And that pretty much takes her out. And uh so uh, that pretty much takes her out. She's she's dead. You know what I'm saying? And like, so the rest of the scene kind of plays out from Connor's perspective, uh, even though like the book is written in first person and it's all from Madison's point of view. Uh, I figured out a way I was like, maybe I can't remember right now, but I think like it was either like she was they shot her in a dome and she was like like going close to death and then she's watching everything go down or i was just like fuck it and she died immediately in that moment and then i just kept describing the battle anyway you know i can't remember i, I did a lot of stuff in the books that you're not supposed to do because i don't give a fuck like you're like oh you're not supposed to open with a dream sequence and i was like really boom dream sequence bitch i'll do whatever the fuck i want uh but anyway, so like she she ends up dead. She's dead. She's got a bullet in the dome and uh, they capture Connor. Right. And so, uh, you know, Connor blacks out. And when he wakes up, he's like in another house or whatever. And he's in this room that's been converted into a prison. And they have another dude, you know, trapped in a, they have another dude that's in a chair and there's a circle on the ground and the guy never leaves the circle. And as Connor and the dude start talking, uh, it turns out that uh that dude is a it's a he's a demon and he's taking over this person's body and they are being transported to the eden complex and uh the guy and the guy is Genova Darkstar. uh i have big plan i have big plans for Genova. i really like that character and uh basically Genova's like yo these dudes the marauders they've been hunting me for a while and they caught me slipping uh you see what i'm saying he was like and so Connor's trying to figure out, I was like, well, what the fuck is going on? He was like, I don't know. I don't know. There's this group. They're called Marauders, and they are abducting people that have any type of special ability, and they're sending them to the Eden Complex. Nobody knows what the Eden Complex is, but they know once you go there, you never come back. And uh, Connor is currently, Connor and that dude, uh, they're currently 
kid, you know, they're currently trapped by the Marauders and they're waiting uh, for the eating for pickup to be transported to the eating complex. So Connor's all doped the fuck up. And so but he is able to uh, he's able to create what time is it? I gotta start heading back. Uh, Connor's all doped up, but he's able to create like a little match. A little man created a fire, and this is like a prototype of what he is in fledgling. So this is like the first time he even created like a form or anything. Like before, he could just manipulate flame, and he can create it. But this was the first time that he created an actual form. And you see, I mean, it made it move. So like he created a little tiny man made a fire. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, no bigger than like a quarter or maybe two quarters stacked on top of each other and uh uh the Genova dark star you know he breaks down connor can instantly tell that he's a demon you see what i'm saying and that he's caught in the devil's trap you know like on some supernatural shit and uh but the, the dude is like yo it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who the fuck what the fuck i am we're both going to the eden complex and we're never coming back no one comes back from this place right and so connor creates a matchstick man and he uses the matchstick man the matchstick fireman to burn a mark through the de- through the devil's trap circle you see what i'm saying and then once the circle is broken like that uh because he burnt a hole through the floor or whatever where the mark was the circle's broken and then uh genova dark star is able to be free and then once he gets free like one of the soldiers come in and then uh dark star immediately transfers from his body into that other person's body and like when he does that the fires of eternity burn away their soul and he now is in he now inhabits that body and so he's like all right well we got to bounce and like in that room is Madison. She has her dome piece shot off. And the dude and Connor's like, no, 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 no. We got to save Madison. We got to save Madison. And the guy's like, oh, she got shot in the dome. I don't know. And Connor's like, have you ever seen anybody come back from this? And, and, and the dude's like, yeah, maybe once or twice. I've seen a vampire get shot. I've seen a vampire get shot in the head and come back. I haven't seen one get decapitated before and come back but we might be able to do something so you know they're trying to do a spell or whatever i can't exactly remember what the fuck they're trying to do and then like the swings oh this is how i did it like the 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 scene switches i can't remember if this scene happened sometime before or it happened right now but it's madison and she is uh she's dead and her soul is on the shores of Sheol, and uh she's waiting for the uh the boatman to come to take her off to wherever the fuck dead souls go and she's talking to one of the celestials one of the gods there and uh, the, the celestials turn the the sky into like a like a like a, a, a view screen to what's happening to Connor and they're watching the shit up on the sky or whatever. And uh, the, the the celestial is like looking at looking at Madison. And Madison's like I don't want to die and she's looking at her like you're not gonna die. You have temporal like there there are temporal particles all over you. There, you 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 are not destined to die at this moment. You you and time are intertwined or some shit like that and blah blah blah. And like whatever the fuck uh, Genova Darkstar did, I can't remember. It brings Madison back to life and it snatches her from the shores of Sheol and it puts her back in her body and in her head heals. So they're about to fucking bounce and shit. Uh, Connor is like, you need. And, and this is like when I was saying about the fire thing. What time is it? This is what I was saying about the fire thing. Like, uh, Con- uh, Connor's told her that vampires catch on fire when they're in the daylight. And he was like, I don't catch on fire in the daylight because I can control fire. But, you know, but I can't I can't stop you from catching on fire. It only works for me. Right. So, like, when she wakes up, the three of them are trying to bounce. She runs outside, boom, immediately catches on fire. They, you know, so, uh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, the, the defense initiative soldiers, they're coming through. There's a fight or whatever. Somebody pulls out a bazooka blows up the fucking house because they're trying to murder him uh they end up murdering a couple people they get to a car connor puts uh madison the flames out on madison with a blanket throw her in the car and shit they're driving on the freeway uh there's an 18 wheeler fucking uh they're driving on the freeway the dudes are behind them Genova's like 
I got this, right? Genova's like, yo, we're not going to get away. We're not going to get away. So he decides, to, he gets out the car, jumps onto a uh, 18-wheeler, and then flips the 18-wheeler, jackknifes the 18-wheeler across the highway so it blocks the highway so they can get off. And then that's the last that you ever see at Genova Darkstar. Uh, the plan was that uh, Genova eventually, because of that, Genova gets caught. She ends up getting taken to the Eden Complex, and now is going to have them break her out of the Eden Complex in a later storyline, but I never got around to writing it. So, but anyway, so like, after that whole incident, Connor and them were like, yo, we, get the, we gotta bounce, we gotta get the fuck up out of here. So they go, and they get back on the plane, and when they're on the plane flying back to Palm Coast, uh, she calls her house and talks to her brother, and then that's when she finds out that... Uh, they uh, that her parents died in a car accident and uh, you know her brother just found out and he's been looking for her he doesn't know where she's at he doesn't know that she's in Oakland and uh, he tells her and then that's where the book ends I was like cliffhanger bitches but uh so that is what happened in the vampire manifesto even though we weren't talking about that we're talking about fledgling i guess you really need to know what's going on with that in order for the fledgling shit to make any type of sense uh i'm gonna hit you up in the next segment i gotta go handle i gotta do what i gotta go ahead brother i gotta do what i gotta do uh i'll break the rest of the shit down in the next segment all right peace out all right bitches i'm back uh, where were we? Fucking, uh, Japan and shit. Yeah, so, woo, oh man, that place was so awesome. So we used, the uh, the club that we used to go to, it was called, it was called, uh, Pyramids. Oh, just keep that fucking shit I was telling you in the beginning in the background. Because all this is happening sort of in order. So, yeah, so like, we court-martialed the cooks right before we went to Japan. And then we got to Japan and then and we, uh... Didn't, we didn't put the cooks in jail and we brought them with us to Japan and donated them to the chow hall so that way our battalion could eat at the chow hall and shit, right? So, uh, yeah, Japan was awesome. Uh, you know, the banning thing. This was when Save It Private Ryan came out because I, I can't remember when that came out, but when it did, the movie theaters was right next to our barracks. And we went and saw that for the first time there. Uh, it wasn't like a delayed release, so we saw it when everybody else saw it. That was like the first time when we re that a bunch of us realized what exactly it was our job was. I mean, we knew what our job was, but mostly it, it was just filled with a bunch of young dudes that, you know, uh, back then, if you did, if you were illegal, uh, you could you could fucking join the military, get citizenship or blah, 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 or you're trying to get out the hood and you need money for school. It was just filled with a bunch of dudes like that. And then that got a bunch of training. And then we saw Saver Prague and Ryan and we were like, wait a minute, these niggas is, that's attacking the, the island, that's us. Isn't that us? Wouldn't that be us? <laughs> and, it, and it just rearranged everybody's thought. I mean, you knew that, but this was the first time we saw it visualized with like visceral honesty if uh if i if i'm using that term correctly i'm probably fucking that up but uh any yeah so the club that we used to go to was pyramids drinks were five dollars now that sounds like a lot i mean that doesn't sound like a lot now but back then that was like the most expensive drink that you could that we'd ever seen at a club five dollars for a drink that was re fucking ridiculous so uh we would steal drinks <laughs> we would steal drinks and shit from the uh japanese shorties they go and like set their drink down on because the way it was set up it was like two floors and like the dance floor was on the bottom and then uh they had like uh lounge areas around the dance floor with couches and shit so you could chill with bitches and then up top there was a uh, uh, there wasn't like a dance floor, but there was a railing that went around the dance floor so you can like stand and look over it. And they had like a table, not a table, but like a counter thing connected to the railing so you could stand at the railing, set your drink down and shit. So we used to steal the Asian girls' drinks and shit because when nobody's sitting spending five dollars, uh, the club started like at nine and then it ended at five. Uh, the reason it ended at five, like technically. Um, Marine, it wasn't technically for real. Marines weren't allowed out in town between like midnight and 5 a.m. And uh, if you got caught out in town, that's what we call like off base. You see what I'm saying? 
uh, if you were off base between that time frame and you got picked up by the police, you could get arrested or uh, they were more than likely they would just pick you up and then take you back to base and then you would get in trouble for disobeying. So this club pyramids, it would it opened up like right before right before the uh, shutdown stopped. Well, no, like I said, it opened up at nine, but it wouldn't close until five and five is when uh Marines were allowed out in town. So that means that you can go to this place and you can chill and just avoid the whole lockdown because they were only looking for people on the streets. They if you were in a they were just like, you can't be on the streets. If you're out in town, you can be out in town. Just don't be on the streets during this time frame. So that's the spot. You know, yeah, you show up at the club like at fucking 10. Yeah, you were there until five, period. You, you just weren't going anywhere. And that's how they made their money. It was a nice spot. This was back when Master P was jumping and shit. Uh... Asian bitches love black dudes back then. You, we, they spoke Japanese. We spoke English. Nobody knew what the fuck we were talking about. And you would still chill with bitches and hang out and have a good time and chill with them after the club and all that type of crazy shit. Uh, a bunch of Marines had, I don't know if a bunch of Marines, somebody, a Marine had raped a little girl. Uh, I don't know how old she was. I want to say maybe not 10, 10 or 11, something like that. Uh, but it happened like right before I got there, maybe like a couple of months. And, and so, uh, they did not like, they didn't like us, uh, when we got there. So there were always people protesting, uh, telling us to go home and shit, uh, by the front gates or whatever. And then like when you went out in town, there were like certain spots that, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. There's some crazy shit going on with the construction. Uh, like there were certain spots out in town that you would go to and they wouldn't serve Americans. And uh, the way you knew that they wouldn't serve Americans, they would have this plate by the door and the plate would be filled with uh, salt. And so if you went there and you saw the plate and the salt and shit, that means that they didn't serve Americans. Don't go on that motherfucker because if you do, you're going to have some issues. Uh, I ran across that one time. Uh, me and my homeboy, we were uh, fucking with some chicks and shit. They were cool. Uh, they wanted to bang, 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 gang, gang. Uh, they wanted to do some of that shit. We were like, fuck it. We'll, we'll roll the dice on the black syphilis that day. Uh, we didn't fuck them. Like I said, I was telling you about the black syphilis. I didn't fuck anybody. But I was rolling the dice on that day. So we went back to their hotel. And uh, yeah, the black syphilis was fake. Uh, that, that shit doesn't exist. It's just something that uh, they made up. Uh, so, But we went back to their hotel. Uh, after the club and shit so we fuck or whatever and the hotel wouldn't let us in because we were american not because we were black this was the first time where people didn't give a fuck that i was black at all they only gave a fuck that i was american and once they found out i was american it was fuck you uh it didn't happen a lot but it happened it didn't happen a lot but when it did happen you were just like huh fuck americans okay i got you but they had like i said there was a rape that happened not that long ago people were pissed and they didn't want us there uh but yeah so we tried to go to their hotel and shit and the hotel wouldn't let us in because we were americans and they were like if you bring those dudes in we're kicking you out so they came back told us and blah 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 so we ended up going to like a playground and shit i got a blowjob at a playground uh it was like 1 30 2 o'clock in the morning by that time uh but uh fucking uh showtime so whisper alley this at the time frame that i was going whisper alley was supposed to be a rite of passage for marines every marine was supposed to go to whisper alley at least once whisper alley is just like a, this is where you go to fuck and you pay people prostitution so and i guess this place has been there for decades I don't know if it's still there, but like people that had like people that were adults to us then. So like older dudes that were in the military remember going to Japan when they were young and Whisper Alley was there. And so that's what they were telling us. They were like, no, this is a rite of passage. So like imagine the a dark alley that is like if you wanted to film this if you wanted to film the scene where batman's parents got murdered this would be the alley that you would film in it it looks like crime alley and it's just like doors it's like a door window 
door window door window door window that's how and it's like a small window too like a super small one you can't climb through it or anything like that and so that's how it is on both sides no lights and shit and as you walk by people women would open up the window and be like showtime 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 (laughs) and that's why it was called fucking whisper alley because when that's how they would you would walk down the alley and all you hear is showtime 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 out of the windows and shit and so basically you (laughs) that's where you go that's where you go to fuck people and uh so a whole bunch of us went uh right we was like fuck it let's do it it was an experience it was was a fucking uh what's going on brother i'm i'm telling the story of uh because i'm doing a podcast or whatever i used to be in the marines there was a place called whisper alley basically it was just prostitution But it was a rite of passage for Marines, and I'm just telling the story. Fucking, uh. So, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to uh, some fucking construction worker and shit. Uh, so, yeah, you were going, so you were going, and, uh. He doesn't look like you want to hear the story. Uh, so. Showtime. So, you go inside the door, right? They lead you back to a fucking uh, room and shit and uh i ended up with an old fucking lady and they take your money from the jump it's 20 bucks it's 20 bucks for whatever they take your money from the jump and then they lead you in the back to this room and shit right and so they took my money and i was just like oh what the fuck did i just get into right here right now yo so he took me in his room, and I was I was sitting there waiting. <laughs> it's like I'm about to be murdered. I'm about to get murdered, and I paid for it. Oh my god! So I'm debating whether or not to leave, and this old fucking lady comes out. <laughs> this old lady comes out. She had to be like 67 or 70 or some shit, and I was just like. What the fuck is she doing? And she grabs this jar of fucking Vaseline and she lifts up her dress and then just shoves it in her pussy and shit in front of me. And I was just like, what the fuck did I just get into? (laughs) And she got on the bed and was like, showtime, showtime. (laughs) I was like, no. Oh my God. So she got on the... She got on the bed. She's like, showtime, showtime. And I was like, no, no, I'm not fucking you. <laughs> I'm not fucking you, right? But you're not getting your money back. So she gave me a blowjob. And I was like, fuck it. I'll, I'll take a blowjob because it, it seems like I'm not, there's no refunds. <laughs> there's no refunds. And so like when it was over, it was a horrible experience. It was, oh my God, I had to have been... Uh, I was young, yo. I had to have been like maybe 23. <laughs> so this is over. This, is, this story is over 20 years old. So, uh, yeah, so she gave me the blowjob and shit. And I fucking, it was just a, it was just a sadness that surrounded me. Like, what the fuck am I doing with my life right now? And I, and I came out. And uh, it was like a whole bunch of us because we all rolled deep because the way that we would do it, you know, what I'm saying like uh, to party out in town, you needed to uh, you needed to get a hotel and uh, you needed to use cabs to go everywhere. So we would get like eight, nine dudes and shit and we would uh, go to uh, a fucking hotel, you know, and just share a room to cut down on the price. And then we would pack. We would pack a motherfucking car up, uh, a uh, taxi. We would call Huncho, Huncho, Huncho. We call him Huncho and shit. We thought it meant taxi. And then when one day our sergeant was like, "What the fuck did you just say?" He was like, "Huncho." He was like, "Don't, don't fucking call people that. That's some racist shit from World War II." <laughs> we were like, "What?" 
He was like, yes, that's some racist shit that they used to call people back in World War II. Don't, don't fucking say that to people. No, I can fucking, the, the, nobody says anything. The, like, and the sergeant's like, of course I'm not going to say nothing. They barely speak fucking English. <laughs> so we had to stop calling them honchos. We did not know that that meant there's some racist shit. But, uh, yeah, that shit happened. And I don't know, it just broke me. I was very, very sad, very sad. And so, like, when it was, like I said, we were rolling deep. So it had to have been, like, 10 to 12 of us at that time and we, when we went to fucking whisper alley we all broke off into separate doors and shit and i was the last one done and i came out and the look of like sadness on my face when i came out was so fucking prominent that uh my homeboys thought that some shit had popped off and they were ready they thought i like i got raped or something or like maybe i got robbed or something like that because i came out and i wouldn't talk about it and my homeboys they was like fuck this oh some shit happened to fucking sean b this is when i this is when i used to go by sean b and shit back in the day uh fucking yo they was ready ran with some gang with some gangster ghetto motherfuckers in the marine corps that were gangster and ghetto before they joined and then they got military training so you couldn't tell them shit like during that time frame all of us thought we were invincible you thought that you could take a bullet and then still beat a motherfuckers ass and you, and you were getting a lot even though i was like uh uh legal administration i was still in the grunt battalion so we still got we got we didn't get a, the same amount of training as other motherfuckers but we got enough we got enough and the, like the jews i ran with they were all like fucking lima kilo so that that's all they did all day every day and shit so they didn't give a fuck so they was straight up ready to uh run up in this motherfucking spot and uh break some shit off all right because they thought some some crazy shit happened to me from because the way i looked and i was just like no 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 and like finally i, I told them what happened with the old fucking lady and shit and they they fucking joked me about that motherfucker the entire night and for a couple of weeks after that and shit oh what what who did who did you fucking what happened what happened in the room in the alley they kept saying that because we had we caught a bus that uh we had caught a bus out in town or whatever so we were catching like we had caught the bus from Schwab to uh, Johnson, because Johnson had the banging hotels, motels, or whatever. Uh, uh, their, their shit was just banging. It was like a Navy base, I want to say. It was either a, a Navy, yeah, it was a Navy base, and I think a little bit further was the Air Force base. But the Navy base had shit. It was dope. The Marine Corps base was like all about this is where you come to kill people. And the Navy base was like, bitch, you in Japan. Woohoo! You want to be a DJ? We got equipment for it. So uh, it had some banging ass DJ equipment. I wanted that shit so bad. It was the whole motherfucking setup, too, son. But yeah, so you would catch like the bus from Schwab to Johnson. And uh, that, that bus is a military run or whatever. And then from Johnson, that's where you would get the hotel. Uh, the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. And that, you know, that would be on base. And then when you wanted to go out in town, pyramids or go shopping, then you would catch the taxi from Johnson to wherever the fuck you want to go. Right. So this was like the end of the weekend. We, we were going from Johnson back to Schwab and then they just kept fucking joking me on the bus. Where where did you go? Where where who 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 gave you a bow job? And they were laughing about it because it was an old lady. And finally, I just stood up and I was like, yeah, yeah, I let a fucking old lady give me a blowjob. I don't give a fuck. I'll do it again, bitch. <laughs> they thought that I was trying to keep it a secret. They didn't realize I don't I don't give a fuck. Y'all I'll tell anybody anything. Uh Unless you tell me it's a secret, then I keep it on a down low. I'm very good with secrets. But they thought that that was a secret that would... Secrets against me where people try to, like, use that shit against me. Ha, I know something about you. You better do this or I'm tell. I'm like, tell, bitch. I ain't doing a motherfucking thing. Fuck you. So they were trying to use that against me. And I was like, nah, son. Nah, it's not happening. Not happening at all. So, but, uh, yeah. That was fucking Showtime Whisper Alley. That shit was crazy. But, uh, yeah, Pyramids was a spot that we would go to. Uh, there was an another spot that was a reggae spot. I only went there once. I can't remember. It, that place was dope as fuck. I got so fucked up that night. Oh, my God, yo, it was fucking ridiculous. Uh, what else did we do in fucking out uh, 29 Palms? Fucking up. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you about the fight I got into. <laughs> so, like, uh... 
I remember how I was telling you that uh, Anne Rice was my uh, Anne Rice was my favorite author. So fuck yeah. it's almost time for me to go. It's almost time for me to go. I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to cut this one down a little bit short. But Anne Rice was my favorite author. I got that book when I was on. Uh, duty one night my homeboy it was like a surprise duty they were like when i say duty that means like uh, uh like every deck in the barracks has two people that are in uniform and they're like they're like supposed to be the law for the deck so they go around make sure that you're not like raping a cow or something in your room or something like that you know what i'm saying and hey hey put that fuck you doing yo that type of shit hey no can't have Japanese women in here. Get her out of here. You know, that type of shit. And now uh, they sprung an army or whatever, so I wasn't prepared. And it's like all night duty. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you, when you go and you do your walk around, you know, you just go walk around, make sure people are doing what they're not supposed to be doing or doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? But then you go back to your desk and then you just sit there for like mad hours. So he was like, yo, here's this book. So uh, another homeboy had came through and he was like, yo, have you eaten yet? And I was like, nah. He was like, uh, he was like, yo, uh, you got, I was like, nah, I ain't got any money, blah, they, blah, they sprung this shit on me. So he was like, oh, well, here's a, uh, he was like, yo, I got four bucks on me, blah, they here, you can give it four bucks and I, you know, give it back to me. And I was like, all right, cool, cool, thanks, I can get something to eat. So I I never paid him back. I, he was like my home, he was like my home buyer, and it was like only like four dollars, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like a major thing. We all had money, but uh, apparently he really wanted his four dollars back. So. <laughs> He never brought it up to me again. We called him a uh, BDI. He was a white boy, and one of his eyes was lazy. <laughs> so his nickname became BDI and shit. And uh, I don't know. He was cool as shit. He was a cool ass white boy that kept saying nigga every once in a while. And <laughs> we'd be like, what the fuck did you just say? He was like, yeah, that fucking nigga just rolled up on me. And we're like, BDI, stop, yo. You can't be fucking saying nigga, yo. You're a white boy. You can't say it. He was like, yo, you know I'm not racist. You know I hang around you. Blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yes. That's why you. That's why we're not beating the shit out of you, yo. We know that you're not racist, yo. You're going to say that shit around the wrong group of people. And they're going to fuck you up because they don't know you. So finally, we broke him out of saying that shit. It was weird because he didn't mean anything by it. He just grew up around black people. And he was just used to saying nigga and shit. And he was just around a bunch of people that, that, that wasn't going to fly. But they knew him and they rolled deep with him. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, when you go through the Marine experience, it's like a band of brothers. I, the, the bond that you get with the Jews that you run with is entirely different from, like, the bond that you get from the dude that you went to high school with you know what i'm saying like these are the cats that you would lay down you would die for so like bdi is the dude that you would lay down you would die for he would do crazy shit and then you would just check him you know what i'm saying like literally my cunt my roommate uh, i called him big country because he was like he was a big corn fed ass white boy from like the middle of the states son had never had a conversation with a black person in his entire life I was the first conversation that he had ever had. You know what I'm saying? So you get surrounded by people like that and you have to mold the men. I'm like, really? No black people? And he was like, yeah. Well, he was like, well, there were maybe like six that went to his school, but he didn't know them. And they weren't in none of his classes and shit. And he was like, that was it. That was it. He was like, there were no other black people where I lived. So he became my roommate. And I was his first introduction, which... I apologize, because if your first introduction to black people is a street nigga from Baltimore, <laughs> there was another white dude. We turned them out, yo. He was a straight corn-fed white boy. He was skinny and shit. I can't remember his name. He was planning on being career military and blah, 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 whoop de whoop. He started hanging with us and going to raves out after four years married a black chick and moved to santa barbara we were like what the fuck happened we turned them out yo <laughs> but uh yeah so bdi was the one that gave me four dollars i fucking forgot about it i never paid him back and shit and bdi used to cut hair he was a hair cutter dude so uh one day somebody we were all downstairs in like the uh in the officer's room because, uh, well, the, like the lounge area, I can't remember the name of it because that's where the officer's the duty on deck's desk would be and it'd usually be like a pool table in there, a couch, uh, TVs, you know, it's like the community place. So we were in there playing fucking Madden and shit and somebody was like, yo, BDI upstairs talking shit about you, talking about you back paying his four fucking dollars where he kick your ass. I was like, wait, what? 
first of all, I don't owe BDI $4. And he's like, well, BDI upstairs cutting hair and he talking shit, saying that you own $4. I had fucking forgot about it. I was like, you know what? I do own $4. I forgot. That shit pissed me the fuck off, son. So I, uh, I went upstairs and I was just like, uh, BDI, what the fuck is going on, son? And before he could say anything, I was I just popped him, popped him a couple of times, threw him into the fucking TV and shit, stomped on him real quick, and then walked downstairs. That was it. There was no, uh, the, the, about the $4 and shit. I just came in the room. He was cutting my homeboy's hair and shit. I just looked at him. I said something. And blah, blah, I just let it go. Right? He just came downstairs. About 10 minutes later, BDI came down that bitch with a bat. He was outside the... He was outside screaming in the windows and shit. Like, fuck you. Fuck you, Bell. I'm going to kick your ass. You caught me by surprise. Fuck you. I'll beat the shit out of you. Blah, blah, blah. He holding that bat, but he wouldn't come in. And finally, he went and he, rep- <laughs> he reported me to uh, uh, the, 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 the major... the. The staff NCO on duty that night, he reported me. And it was some old white dude. He was like a warrant officer. Uh, he didn't like me and shit, but he didn't like BDI more. And so he went and told on me. And so the, uh, the duty officer pulled us in there, had us both at attention. And he was like, all right, tell me what happened. And so we go, both gave our our uh, things or whatever about what happened. And the dude, the old dude was like, all right, so the way I took it, you gave him four dollars he never paid you back you started talking shit about him it got back to him and then he beat your ass is that basically what happened and we were like yeah yeah and he was like all right well uh, i kind of feel like it's even <laughs> like you shouldn't worry about it uh yes you do need to pay him your four dollars uh i expect you to do that on your next paycheck and and he looked at BDI, he was like, and you, I would take this as a cautionary tale to not talk shit about people because there are consequences. Now, uh, we can move forward and I can charge him. Uh, but it was something that BDI had did as well that he fucked up and said. And then he was like, but if I move forward and charge him with this, I have to charge you with this. Because I think it was uh, he was giving haircuts in the barracks. And I think that's not allowed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, basically, the dude was just on my side and was like, someone's talking shit. And he got his ass whipped. And, you know, that's just what happens. And he came up and he didn't want to see me get in trouble or whatever so he was like yeah but you were cutting hair you're not supposed to be cutting hair in the barracks and now i know about it so technically i need to do something because if i charge him it's going to be where did the fight take place who was there what was happening and then your hair cutting shit's going to come out which means now we got to charge you so we let it slide or whatever but and then me and bdi we, we became friends again i gave him his four dollars back this was back in the day where you could whip a motherfucker's ass and then three days later you guys are cool again you know what i'm saying uh <sighs> Yeah, there was another story where some dude to spit on BDI and a bunch of some other cats that we had ran with. I'll tell that in the next segment. And uh, we fucking rolled up. This is when we first got to Japan. First day. We hadn't even been in the barracks yet. And some shit had popped off and we rolled up super deep. I'll tell that in the next segment because I got to shut this down. But uh, all right. Peace, bitches. All right, I'm back, people. Uh, going to have break down the last part of uh, the fledgling book, and then that'll be a wrap for this episode. Uh, so uh, basically, where we had left off, uh, Hercules had just killed the uh, the the werewolf that ran that werewolf pack. Uh, he was a, he was an ancient dude, and he was called the Lion of Nemon. Once uh, Hercules realized his name, he was like, "Oh, that's the dude I need to murk for my labors," and you know, Her- Hercules murks him. Uh, which kind of pisses off the coven of the disillusion, but on the other hand, he is Hercules, so he can kind he kind of does whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, uh, Megan, uh, she has white hair. She's in, she's the uh, superstar actress. Uh, she does not like Madison at all, and so she's ready to go and murk her, right? And uh, your your boy Hercules is like I I think that's a bad idea. I don't I don't think that you should do that. I, I don't think that you should attack her. And uh, she says some slick shit back to him. You know, like don't don't presume don't presume to tell me what the fuck to do. I do whatever I want. She says some shit like that. It was it was dope. I gotta give it to myself. I came up with a dope reply of I'll do whatever the fuck I want. You need to back off, right? And he was just like okay. <laughs> 
the reason that he the reason that he did that the reason that he's like yo you shouldn't fight her hercules recognizes the blade of osiris he's seen it before he's now he's not letting anybody know what's going on with it but uh i don't know why he's not letting anybody going on with it there's there's something going on but he's seen it before he knows how dangerous it is and that's why he was like mm, I, mm, I, I think that's a bad idea but anyway megan fucking attacks uh megan attacks fucking no 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 not not yet uh, i forgot i forgot a scene so like before before uh, Hercules fights the werewolf, you know they're all fucking there. It's 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 Hercules. It's the uh, the werewolf that ran that wolf pack that was hunting down uh, Madison. His name is Bartholomew Bartholomew Kruger, and he's a big giant uh, ancient werewolf, uh, all white or whatever. You know what I mean? So he's there. Uh, Hercules is there. Uh, Megan is there, uh, Salome is there, and Enoch is there, and they they've just saved Stacy with the, with you know with the mixture of their blood and uh, the black unicorn, the black Pegasus heart or whatever. So now she's like this weird fucking hybrid because I wanted to create a hybrid because I wanted to do a spinoff and I was going to use her to be the spinoff character. So that's why I, I kind of focused on her in this book and made her into something that she wasn't. Uh. That's this is a scene where it comes out all about Connor, and this is when she tells Connor to fuck off, because like as they're talking, because like I said, uh, she doesn't remember being turned into a vampire. When the last thing that she remembers is like she had the arm through her chest, she was about to die. Uh, so when Barth- when Kruger is talking and everything, he lets it know, he lets it out that uh, him and him and a fucking uh, Connor came had a deal and connor knew about the kidnapping in advance some some shit like that i can't remember you know i should have reread this book i'm sorry i I know that i wrote it but the shit it's not staying in my mind but this is when it all comes out it all comes out that connor knows way more than he's supposed to know it comes out that he's the one that's been setting her on fire and that vampires don't vampires can walk in the daylight and everything is fine uh it turned it came out it comes out that he because like connor runs with the uh, coven of the disillusion that's that little crew except the uh except kruger except the werewolf he's not in it but all those other cats they're the coven of the disillusion connor runs with them so he knows about he knew about madison previously before all of this happened there's a specific time like they have the coven have their own plan and it's because uh they're trying to uh they're trying to uh stop armageddon because armageddon is coming or whatever and madison is tied up to, tied up to it they're trying to stop the forgotten because the like armageddon is the forgotten future event that's the main thing that hangs over the series and madison is the one that causes it and it all stems from her getting the blade of osiris so they are trying to stop that and they know that she's involved but they don't know exactly how you know what i mean and so they had plans in motion like before she was even born and you know and uh connor fucked it up and and uh jumped right because she like she, they didn't want her to find the blade of osiris until later way later you know what i mean but connor jumped in and boom now she has it but uh so she basically tells connor to fuck off i never want to see you again you've been fucking jedi mind tricking me you've been burning me alive when i go outside you knew about uh, a lot of this shit in advance blah they blah, fuck you so that's how she's rolling you know what i mean and then that's when fucking uh uh, Kruger, the the werewolf, lets us slip that he's the lion of Nimone, and then that's when Hercules is like, "Oh, really, bitch?" And then fucking murders him, and then rips his skull off, and it had like like it's, he rips his skull off, so it's the top part of the werewolf's head, and his and the and the like the be- the werewolf's back is attached to it, like the the flesh, you know what I'm saying? And after uh, Hercules murks that nigga, uh, he puts the fucking hat, he puts the fucking skull hat on and shit, and wears it you know, on some on some straight Beowulf type shit, you know what I'm saying? Which I almost dropped my fucking phone, which pisses everybody off in the coven. Uh, they basically had captured him. I want to say that because I don't think that they're working together. Connor is working with them, but the coven isn't working with them. And they captured him and they're trying to figure out what was going on. And like the dude that uh, her boyfriend, the, the one that was supposed to be the main lead, but didn't. 
uh, he's a werewolf and he's been spying on them with uh, for Kruger or whatever. But but anyway, and blah blah blah. So Megan and uh, Madison get into a fight. It looks like it looks like fucking. Uh, 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 Megan is going to win. She's an ancient vampire. She has skill, but fucking Madison has the blade of Osiris, and the blade of Osiris has pumped her up with all types of shit to enhance her on a genetic level. Because like uh, uh, the, the 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 blade, it was made by Osiris. It's a weapon of the gods, and so even for her to hold it, she's just not. She's not even physically capable and powerful enough to hold it uh kind of like what they did with the and uh the infinity gems and uh and uh fucking uh guardians of the galaxy the first one you know when they, when they grab the gem and it fucking burns through them you got to be super strong to hold it that's how you have to be for uh the blade of osiris i wrote that shit first so i did not copy them uh so yeah so when she grabbed it that thing injected mad shit into her it changed her on a genetic level and made her stronger faster blah 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 whoop de whoop you know what i mean so she uh madison ends up getting the upper hand and fucking murders uh murders uh megan uh, she caught megan slipping and shit and the blade of osiris uh draws megan's soul into it uh basically uh, one of the things that the blade does is it, uh, if you kill someone with the with the, uh, with the blade it, it sucks their soul in and then it uses their soul as kind of like fuel and then that's how you can uh teleport through dimensions and shit uh so yeah so that happens oh blah 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 uh the coven is like you know what fuck it go ahead and do what you gotta do uh because like yeah i want to say even the coven was against uh, Megan attacking her, but Megan just got pissed, you know, and so uh, they let her go or whatever because she has the blade now, and they're, they're, they're like, they're not fucking with her, she's already murdered one dude, we're not fucking with her, so they let her go, uh, what the fuck happens after that, uh, they let her go, everybody goes home and shit, uh, when they get home, uh, they find that their uncle is there, right, uh, Uncle Frankie, uh, I, I, I did, I put Uncle Frankie is my uncle. He was my uncle Frankie in real life, and he died while I was writing that book, and I put him in the book, and I didn't, I didn't want to change his name or anything. So Uncle Frankie was in there, and basically the reason that he's there is, like I said, uh, in the Vampire Manifesto, uh, the, her parents, like when she wakes up, her parents are already gone, uh, they're, they're, and they were only supposed to be gone for like two days or something, for like the weekend or maybe like for the rest of the week or whatever, and uh, you know, they're in high school. They can handle their shit. So, but they got in contact with uh, Uncle Frankie, and so he came down to watch over the kids, you know, just like normal shit. Like, all right, we got to get a babysitter. And so Uncle Frankie came down. So when they get back to the house, he's there, and they're like, oh, shit. So then they got to kind of explain what's going on with him. Uh, some shit like that. Damn, I'm, I'm really drawing a blank right now. Uh, so they end up going... So, you know, so they, they shut it down for the day and they're like, all right, this is, this is enough for the day. We need, I'm going to sleep. We're going to, I got to go to sleep. Right. So she goes to sleep. She has another dream, uh, about the alternate dimension version of her and they talk and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm priming that shit up. I, cause I knew even back then that I was bringing in an alternate version of her. So I was priming that shit up or whatever. So like, uh. The next day, they go to school. She wants so because she wants a normal day. She wants none of this fucking uh, Dungeons and Dragons shit that's been happening to her. So she goes to school. She's in class, and uh, oh, well, let me let me rephrase. Uh, the people. So like there were two groups that were hunting Man Madison. There was the Coven of the Disillusion. You see what I'm saying? And they they did not want to kill her. They had plans for her which didn't involve her dying. And then there is the trans, uh, the translucent man who uh, has the wolf pack that sent the wolf pack and he wants to murder them. And then there are the marauders and nobody exactly know who the marauders work for. I think I eventually had the marauders work for the translucent man. Uh, so like when they're, I just needed to break down the factions real quick. So like when she's in school the next day, she's chilling. Connor shows up in her classroom, right? And the teacher is like, who the fuck are you? And Connor's like, who the fuck are you? 
<laughs> so you know they have a quick back and forth, and Connor basically punks him and like convinces him that he uh, he he's supposed to be there. And Madison is like, get the fuck out, get the fuck away from me, get the fuck away from me. And Connor is like, yo, no, the you need to leave. We need to leave now. The translucent man is coming, right? I'm here to warn you. The translucent man is coming. And she's like, the translucent man's always been coming. I told you, you're fucking shady, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, you don't understand. When I say he's coming, I mean now. He's coming here now. And like right after that, like a, a, a being, a, a being, like a person, uh, a creature, a appears in the classroom uh and it's it's it is the translucent man and this is when you find out what the translucent man is so he he's uh translucent man is actually osiris uh the god of osiris from and he created the blade of osiris so he appears in the classroom uh and the way that so he's a celestial like i call the god celestials uh, the way that he looks, I want to say he's probably like eight feet. Uh, uh, think of like a like really like top physical peak condition, but his uh, skin is see through. It's translucent, and there is like a mini nuclear reactor ball going on in the side of his chest that's sending out electrical sparks all through his body, and you can see it. And that is what the the gods look like. And so he shows up. And they're like, oh, shit, right? And uh, fucking, uh, he's, uh, he's like, uh, you know, he's like, oh, yo, you have something that belongs to me. And Madison's like, yo, this shit belongs to me. And so, like, Osiris raises out his hand and the essence of the blade of Osiris uh, is being stripped away from Madison. Because, uh, like I said, like, when she... Her whole arm is now the blade. I mean, even though there's an actual blade that she holds, it transformed her whole arm. So because her whole arm is that rock shape, like uh, like that volcanic rock looking thing that's see through with black liquid inside of it. So all of that shit is being stripped off of her arm and, and it's like going through the air and it's coming to Osiris's arm. And it's, you know, and he's stripping the fucking uh the blade of Osiris completely from her and so they're trying to battle it out and like I said the blade is sentient and it starts to fight back against Osiris and there's like a mini tiny explosion and shit and the blade reappears back on uh, Madison's hand so this is when uh, Osiris turns to Connor and he's like why he's like you know what I have severely underestimated you and for that I am sorry instead of us being adversaries why don't you join my team and I can make shit happen for you and uh, uh, Connor turns to Madison and he's like I love you blah 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 and she's like fuck you you know I want nothing to do with you and then at that moment that's this this is the moment where connor was already bad but this is the moment where but connor was already a villain but he was i gotta go back to work uh we're shutting this segment down peace out people